Okay, so do you guys remember a year ago when I made that video about the second Joe Holy Doc and I made some throwaway joke comment about calling it The Doc 2? Well, now we have a The Doc 3 and I'm not even kidding this time. The document is called Joe Doc 3 and if I'm being completely honest, that's pretty much as much as you need to know about the whole thing. Because I genuinely do not believe that this doc is coming from the right place and I also don't believe a lot of what it says on it. So I've gathered what I think is all the most important information and I've gone through and made the most important points from the document itself. And so we're going to go through that. We're going to go through what I think is true, what I think isn't true and my general thoughts on the whole thing. But to start, there are some very, very important things that you need to know about the original poster of the document. They apparently go by E on Twitter with the handle Joe Hawley Burner, which is a bit suspicious, I can't lie. And this is their original tweet. It says, Joe Hawley groomed me and manipulated me for two years. I apologize for my errors in the past. This is my recollection of screenshots and evidence to back it. Now, this is pretty cut and dry. And if you want to read the document, you can go to the description where it will be there. They might take it down at some point. I'm not sure, but I can't have any control over that. But there is one part of this post that people don't seem to be focusing on nearly as much as they should. And that is the I apologize for errors in my past. And you might be thinking, well, what are these errors? I also thought that. And it turns out that those errors are consistently lying and having fake identities. So right off the bat, this person is not trustworthy, but they say they have proof. And if I see proof, then I'm going to believe it. So let's go through the doc, shall we? A lot of it is pretty much just venting and a lot of personal stuff. So I'm going to skip over those bits and go to the more important accusations. But like I said, I encourage you to read the whole thing anyways. So this whole thing apparently started when the Tally Hall Twitter account messaged this person. I'm going to refer to them as E just because that's their Twitter handle. So Tally Hall messaged E something kind of weird. They apparently immediately knew it was Joe. And this was two years ago in 2022. So this was before the old second doc and before there was any really hard proof about Joe Hawley being an actually terrible person. So yeah, they ended up DMing Joe Hawley with a video that they had made talking about how much they appreciated his music over the years, which it's a fan, you know, whatever. And they apparently just messaged each other on Twitter for a couple months. E says that Joe came off as a misunderstood person and they seemed to relate to them. And apparently they also thought that they shared a lot of traits. And it's also important to mention that throughout this document, E kind of says a lot about her own mental health and talks about having autism and depression and a lot of that kind of stuff. And we obviously know that Joe Hawley is also really not mentally well, even if he doesn't want to admit it. And then comes the first very red flag. Joe Hawley apparently admits to using a lot of other young women for gifts and praise. And E knew at this point that Joe was talking to a lot of young women online. There is no proof of this, but this does seem relatively on par, so I'm inclined to believe it. And so after realizing that Joe Hawley is being manipulative and abusive, she obviously stops talking to him. Kidding, no she doesn't. And instead actually asks for his number to take these conversations outside of Twitter. Now look, in hindsight, I think I was pretty harsh during the last document. Because the victim of the last document was only 17 years old. And while I was 16 at the time, and I'm 17 now, and I still stand by a lot of the stuff that I said because they did make bad decisions, I don't think I really made it clear enough that Joe Hawley was in the wrong completely. But this time it's different because throughout this document, this person is making some really bad decisions, much worse than the last time. And their age during these interactions were from 22 to 24. This is a grown ass woman. And I think that's genuinely a really important part of this. Over these two years, Joe Hawley showed a lot of manipulative tactics. Things like completely blocking her and ignoring her and then coming back to show her loads of affection, that kind of stuff. Shit, that's just obviously not right. And at this point, I don't really blame this person for continuing to talk to him because this is all over messages and it is a manipulation tactic for a reason. They were probably just being manipulated. So yeah, up until this point, Joe Hawley is completely in the wrong and the victim is a complete victim. But for this next part, I'm going to read it out as it's said on the documents. Then something awful happened. I realized he was using me to make his ex-girlfriend Aurora Spears jealous. So then some something awful happened and this person realized that Joe Hawley was being a massive asshole. And I think from this point onwards, it starts to become so much worse, but also so much more preventable from this person's standpoint. You can talk all you want about being starstruck and seeing him as an idol and power imbalance and all that stuff, but I have dedicated hundreds upon hundreds of hours to make videos about songs that Joe Hawley has made along with other band members. For whatever reason, I have a very strong appreciation for Joe Hawley's work. I don't like him as a person in any way, but I have an appreciation for his work. Just like what you did. I mean, that's why you sent him the video in the first place. But the difference is, I'm 17 years old and I would never DM him about this. I want to make it clear again that Joe Hawley is in the wrong here and this person is a victim, but I recognize that it could have been completely prevented and I don't think that any of this was really necessary. I think in this entire document there is only one thing that I think is worth actually calling out about Joe Hawley, because the rest of it is either some personal stuff about a bad relationship or it's already been said in the last document. And on top of that, a lot of the things that I said don't have any actual proof. Like, they provided a few screenshots and the screenshots back up a good amount of what they say, but they often say something and then provide a screenshot as proof but the screenshot doesn't prove it. It's kind of weird. Go read the document for yourself, honestly. And as this thing goes along, it's clear that E developed an obsession with Joe Hawley, and they even recognized that at the time. The next step in them talking was apparently in Easter of 2023, which was like six months on from their first conversation, where they had a call on Snapchat. I'm not sure if it was video as well as voice, but they had a call. And the poster says here, and I quote, you should be able to see why all of this was an abuse of power. And yes, I agree. But, but like, come on. 
I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I would never in a million years defend the things that Joe Hawley is doing here because he is being the biggest asshole that you can ever be. But the accusation that you made is that he groomed you, and this isn't that. So far, all I've seen is a really unhealthy relationship. And I just want to hammer down again that this person has a history of lying and spreading misinformation. And you'll see as we go along, the decisions that this person made were just completely awful by any standards. And some of the other tweets that E has been making are just not good. They even said at one point, well, if you believed Eden, then why don't you believe me? Which is just massive assholery completely. But anyways, let's continue onwards. We now get to the meetup saga, which by the way, it's hilarious that they called it that. And so apparently in May of 2024, they end up meeting up. Remember when Joe Hawley was sighted at the Jukebox the Ghost concert? Well, that's where they met up and the person in the red dress with him was apparently this woman. Apparently throughout this whole thing, Joe was very possessive and said a lot of weird things and accused her of like having sex with the other band members or something like that. You know, just, just crazy insecure shit. And was just overall really horrible to this person. But they ended up willingly staying for a second night. And then she apparently made a reference to Pretty Woman, which he really didn't like. So we ended up booking another room and then going and staying in another room. And then she had some kind of mental breakdown, it seems like. And then after all of this, she still asked him if she could see him in Detroit for her birthday, which is just crazy. And apparently he seemed apprehensive at first, but eventually obliged. And if you ask to see someone for your birthday and they are apprehensive and then obliged, you're not going to get what you want from them. That's just what I'm going to say. So she ended up booking a plane ticket to go see him in Detroit. And then it seems like they had some kind of disagreement beforehand. And then he said he doesn't want to see her anymore. But at this point, she was already on the plane, but they hadn't taken off yet. And so Joe Hawley told her to get off the plane and said, please do yourself a favor. But of course she didn't do that. And oh yeah, this part is crazy too. When she landed in Detroit, she contacted Joe through a burner phone number, a different number to try and make amends with him, which eventually worked. But that's just not something that you would do in that situation, right? And this to me just seems like an entirely unhealthy and obsessive relationship from both sides that should have been ended like years ago. Okay, and now we get to a point in the document other than the very first bit where I think Joe Hawley is entirely in the wrong. Because by swearing at and insulting this woman and being very aggressive, he ended up forcing her to drink a bottle of liquefied nutmeg. And I'm gonna be real, it doesn't matter who it is, if a 40 year old guy was being aggressive towards me to get me to drink a bottle of something, I would have probably drunk at least some of it. Maybe not the whole bottle, but enough to make them happy because that shit's probably a really scary situation. And also like, this has got to be illegal, right? This is genuine abuse. But then they ended up going back to his room and he kicked her out for being a temptation, whatever the fuck that means. And like I said, I've skimmed through this whole thing. I don't want anything to be taken out of context. I think you should go read it all yourself. She talks a lot about her own mental health, which I think is important in a lot of ways, but also a lot of it to me seemed like venting or just like looking for support. Like this document to me doesn't seem like it's about Joe Hall it seems like it's about her. And I think dragging down somebody else's name for that, when we already know he's a bad person, like anybody who denies Joe Hawley is a terrible person is just wrong. And then, so after hearing everything that you've just heard, let's see the conclusion. And I quote, he is still grooming a plethora of young women and they either feel too special to believe me or too jealous to care. Just think about that for a second. Now, I'm not 100% sure on the technicalities of the term grooming. There's obviously the whole stigma about grooming being with kids. That's not necessarily true. Almost all the definitions that I've found include children and young adults. And technically they are kind of a young adults. But it also says grooming usually includes sexual or financial incentive. And clearly there was no financial incentive because she was paying for her own plane tickets and shit. And the sexual one's kind of a little bit different. Because in this doc, she says that Joe Hawley did see her naked. But, and I haven't mentioned this until now for a reason, because I don't think it really matters too much. She runs an OnlyFans and throughout this whole thing was still running her OnlyFans. So I'm half convinced that the seeing me naked bit was just from online. And I also think that this document ends in a very hypocritical way. So I'll read out one of the last bits word for word. I don't want anyone to harass him, but I want it to be a warning. Stay away from Joe. Hawley. Stop idealizing him. Stop believing him if you don't know him or have never met him. It's bad for both him and you. Okay, yes, great. I fully believe that. I fully stand by that. But we know this and we were told this a year ago and you didn't listen to that either. And so to me, even if all of this is true, which I have my doubts about, I don't feel like it's coming from the right place. I I'm going to be completely on the record here. I am fully against Joe Hawley. I do not support him in any way. I just like his music. And as a whole, I don't really agree with Twitter because I hate 99% of that community. But one thing I've always agreed with them with is that they don't like Joe Defenders. And I'm fully with that because those people are delusional and probably assholes themselves. And earlier today I reposted something on Twitter saying that if Joe Hawley's at Sonic Lunch and I kind of believe that he will be there to not go up to him and talk to him. First of all that's never gonna happen. People are gonna go up and talk to him. But please for the love of God if you see him and you go up and talk to him just get an autograph and leave. Get him to sign your notebook or your tally hall CD and just leave it be. Don't try and say something that you think he's gonna like. Don't try and get contact with him outside of Sonic Lunch because I'm gonna be honest if I see another document like this next year I'm gonna have no sympathy left and I will genuinely not even make a video on it. And the reason I made this one is because I don't want people to get things twisted and I find it really important that it needs to be known that this person has lied before multiple times and the person who made the original Joe Hawley document with all the proof doesn't agree with what this person is doing and I gotta tell you bro this community has just been getting worse and worse and worse and I don't understand why. I hope this video was informative and I hope I don't get flamed on Twitter for this because people are like supporting this person and I don't think that's a bad thing they clearly had a tough time and I think they deserve support but I think equally as much you all deserve to know that they're probably lying about a lot of this but yeah thanks for watching I'll see you all in the comment section if you need
need me to clarify anything, I will. Read the document for yourself and I'll see you later. Hopefully my next video is about a song. I think it will be. So yeah, bye.